Welcome to the channel friends. So today's video is going to be a quick review of the latest accessory I got for my XP1000 as well as use for the Sportsman 850 Premium Trail. Now I went ahead and purchased this cargo box which is the open style cargo box. Now I already have a video on the closed style 25 gallon storage box from Polaris. Now I did use that box but not as much as I, I expected and I just recently sold it because I want to see if this right here is going to be better fit for more of the stuff I do here in the property and uh, you know just general maintenance and work outside landscaping and carrying tools. Now the theory behind this is that I can actually put more stuff in this because there's an open top and it accepts five gallon buckets or pails as you can see there. It has a little fencing to hold in the buckets. Now I think this cargo box here or tray or bin whatever you want to call it uh, is more so suited for work on a property at your house or whatever where you're not concerned where you're going to get dust inside um, the container. So for me this is most of the use I do. I really do not like trail riding with anything in the back. I like to be able to swing my leg around and, and ride the back rack of my feet if I have to. Um, so I try not to carry anything in the back of the ATV when I'm out riding on the trail, on a normal trail ride. But when I'm on the property I need um, some cargo capacity when it comes for tools, shovels, whatever, things that are larger, chainsaws, um, gallons of bar oil, gasoline containers, all sorts of things that take up a lot of space and sometimes I don't want to have to take out my 4x6 trailer, okay? So this is an alternative to having, uh, you know, a trailer or whatever, uh, or even just this right here. This is my normal setup. This is a milk crate style uh, container, and I have it bungeed down, which works great. I put some rubber stops in the bottom, some rubber feet, so it kind of has some isolation from the rack. It doesn't sit directly on the rack because it would scratch the hell out of it. Uh, but this right here is not that durable as you can see it's starting to break and crack I just had this laying around so I strapped it on but I have become accustomed to using this uh, Whether it's going out to the mailbox and putting mail and packages inside here and riding back to the house uh, Or just putting like a couple basic tools that I need when I'm doing some maintenance on a property on the sprinklers or whatever yeah. It's good to have storage on your ATV um, the Polaris ATVs have some storage But I would not consider it like easy access because you know, you have to like unstrap everything and open everything up. Uh, there's a you know a storage compartment back here, which is sometimes good. Um, but I find this here is a lot easier just to be able to throw your tools in, your gloves, whatever you need for the for the you know the quick task you have at hand, and uh, take care and get that kind of out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this box. Now I'm gonna show you guys in the workshop what it comes with and kind of a better view of everything. Uh, but this is uh, right now loose on the machine. As you can see, it fits on the rack system if you have the tubular style rack. I'm also going to put it on the 850 and we'll see if it fits with the standard handles that come on the Polaris ATVs. So I'm going to go ahead now and bring this thing in the workshop and show you guys kind of the upfront, you know, in detailed view of it. All right, guys, so here it is up close. Uh, this is the storage bin or storage box, whatever you want to call it. It applies to three different part numbers. Uh, this manual here, um, it's pretty much the same mounting strategy as your other cargo boxes for the 850 and XP1000. It has four expansion anchors, which are included. Here is your part number. And as you can see here, the instructions show the traditional box, the, which is what I had before the 25 gallon Polaris cargo box. I will go ahead and post the part number of this in the description below. So if you're interested in it, I will give you the part number and try to provide a link. Um, but here it is up close. You have four holes, as you can see there, and you have retention for buckets. So you place your five gallon buckets in there and they should stay put uh, for the most part. You also have these holes here, these through holes for 
the lock and ride anchors. So you have like eyelets and things like that that go in here, expansion anchors. So you can strap stuff down, you know, horizontally and across, whichever way you want. Uh, you have these generous slots here for holding the tray and lifting it up, which also can serve as uh, a mounting point. Uh, the bottom sides here have slots for your tie downs and your bungee cords and things like that. So it, it has a lot of real estate when it comes to, uh, you know, for hooks and things like that. Uh, let's spin this thing around. So honestly, this to me looks a little bit bigger than the standard cargo box because the cargo box would just kind of radius over here. This has like this whole kind of border that goes all the way around, which uh, houses the handles and things like that. Um, the box really did not have that, that I, the one I had before, the closed one, the 25 gallon. But it is what it is. I, I kind of like this design. I will try it out and see if um, it serves me well. But like I said, this is a Polaris product. It is meant for the XP1000 and 850. But moving along, uh, the great thing about this product is that it is a Polaris product. It is meant to fit on your machine. It's meant to look great on your machine and it's meant to function well with your machine. Uh, you cannot get that with other, you know, brands of aftermarket cargo boxes. I just don't think they look as good as a true genuine Polaris product. So I'm going to go ahead now and quickly attach the anchors, which have pre-drilled holes here, which is nice. It's all ready to go. It's a matter of just threading on the anchors and putting it on your machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you what it looks like on both machines and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I went ahead and installed the expansion anchors. Now, some people have trouble with these type of anchors because uh, they don't understand that you really have to uh, adjust this nut accordingly, depending on the tolerance, you know, the manufacturing tolerance on your machine, the rack itself. So, you know, some machines might have a larger hole, some machines might have a smaller hole. So that's why you have to adjust this nut um, I have it right now adjusted so the, the threaded part is just sticking out of the lock washer and, and nut here. Um, so what you want to do is keep on adjusting this till uh, when you throw the lever on the inside, it squashes down and has a good fit on your machine. As you can see there, it's squashed. I just released the lever and it's straight, cylindrical shape. Then you, you throw down the lever and then it squashes down that rubber piece. This hard plastic is up against the box. That's a like a black nylon. So the soft rubber is what you want inside the lock and ride anchor on your rack. So as you can see there, uh, this is going to take some time. You want to just adjust all four uh, to the point where when you lock them down, when you pull up on your box, it does not uh, remove itself uh, with pressure. So, you know, that just takes some time use a half inch wrench and uh, get that nice and tight a lot of people will misadjust this too loose thinking it's okay 
These will settle over time, so you might have to go initially a little more tight than you would think you would, uh, but they'll break in and uh, settle a little bit. So uh, that's gonna be the key to making sure this thing stays on your machine, because a lot of people have issues with these boxes coming off their machine is because uh, the expansion anchors were not properly installed and adjusted. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead now and take the cargo tray slash box and put it on the machines and see what it looks like. All right, so went ahead and placed the box on the 850 and no go. As you can see here, the side handles allow it to fit, but the rears do not. So it needs about a quarter inch of space uh, in order for this to sit down and be actually mounted to the rack. So if you have these factory handles here, I guess you're gonna have to remove the two in the back in order to mount this box and use the box. So that's kind of interesting. You would think that they would design the box to fit all the Polaris models, especially uh, your factory accessories. I mean, all the Polaris ATVs come with these four handles in the back of the rack here. So, um, you know, I would think they would have would have thought about that, but I guess not. Uh, so if you have one of these machines with the standard handles, it's a no go right off the bat. So. Let me go ahead and um, talk about some other things I noticed um, really quick, my initial impressions, I guess you could say. So this compared to the 25 gallon, I would say it is larger width wise and depth because of this, you know, perimeter here, this border all the way around. Now, right here is kind of intrusive on trying to get onto the machine. So you know, I'm okay, I'm pretty fit and I can swing my leg over that, but if you're, a, you know, kind of a big person, you're gonna have a hard time with this. You might catch your foot in that, you know, catch stuff, whatever it may be, backpack, if you're out with a backpack. Um, so that's something to consider. But I'm gonna be using this on the property, doing work with it, you know, putting tools and buckets and rope and chainsaw and bar oil and containers in here, chains, things like that. So I need an open top container like this uh, for me to work through and to work out of, I should say. So, you know, a couple other things I noticed. Um, it does have drain holes in the front. Right here in the front, there's one on each side, right next to the expansion anchor. You have like a kind of a recessed area all in here for hooks and things like that. As you can see, there's space in the molding, in the housing here. So you can kind of almost like use that as like a, uh, a mount for a bungee on the inside just something I noticed um, one thing I did have to change on this or kind of modify I had to re-center these reflective stickers in the back they were just like put on there without like any real like you know care and they were kind of off the border and the sticker itself was like had a big gap on it so whenever you you know down the road when I drove through some mud or get some dust on it it's going to get behind the sticker and eventually peel off. So I went ahead with a heat gun and removed it and recentered each one of them because they were both kind of misplaced. Uh, but that's just a little detail that I noticed right off the bat. So one other thing I noticed is that obviously you do not have access to your factory cargo spot in the back of the machine because the box is obviously covering it. Uh, you will not be able to use that. So if you have stuff in there, you will have to remove the box. So. That's something to consider, but you do get a ton of storage space up top. That's kind of the trade-off. So I'm going to go ahead now and put this on the XP-1000 and uh, show you guys what that looks like. All right, so I think we have success with the XP-1000. It does fit the tubular style frame. There's a generous amount of room all the way around. You can still get your hand in here to use this as a grab point on the machine. I went ahead and installed all the expansion anchors. Uh, they should have some resistance and you should push down on the box as you go and flip the lever. You want to have a good amount of compression in that anchor uh, to make sure that it stays put. And then I gave it a tug and it's not going anywhere. So these will settle a little bit, so don't go out riding right away. You want to make sure to check these before you go out for a good ride uh, because rubber will settle a little bit and conform to that shape. Depending on your machine, it could be very... You know slightly different I shouldn't say very different but slightly different different hole size and some people might have to tighten it more than others but 
Really happy with the way it looks on the XP-1000. And it's too bad that it doesn't fit on the 850 the way it is. Uh, I really don't want to remove those rear handles because it's part of the look of the machine and it's good to grab the machine here as a grab point um, when the machine is stuck or to roll the machine, whatever the case is. But that there is the new style cargo box I got. You know, I sold off that 25 gallon. We'll see if I regret it. I want to give this a good try and um, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think I'd made a good choice by selling off that enclosed, you know, cargo box trading off for this one here? Um, this one is about $210. That's what I paid for uh, this unit right here. So, you know, I buy this stuff myself. Polaris does not supply it to me. So this is all my, my own money, personal money I spend on all these toys and things like that uh, to show you guys. But I'm really happy with the way it looks. It looks like it's going to be a really functional piece, you know. Hopefully I can take advantage of those five-gallon pail retention rings there, whatever you want to call them. But as you can see here, the XP-1000 is kind of down and out. It has uh, some engine issues uh, relating to uh, the engine flooding with water and crap. So I'm going to have to diagnose this and probably... Uh, take care or rebuild whatever needs to be taken care of and get it back in operation. But right now it's in the hospital. It's waiting to be uh, kind of <laughs> taken care of. Uh, but the Corvette is really taking up a lot of my time. Almost done with the Corvette. A lot of fuel system stuff, intercooler stuff. Uh, as you can see here, it's almost there. I have the supercharger back on and the lid and everything. But if you want to check out my Corvette videos, I'll post those separately. I don't want to get into that because some people just don't like that content. Um, so stay tuned for the videos on the XP-1000. I'm not sure if I'm going to cover any of the topics of the engine rebuild, uh, depending on how easy or how difficult it is. Um, I just want to kind of get this done and out of the way because I'm losing riding season here, um, having this thing machined down. I need to get myself a backup machine. Uh, that's a, a future plan. So not sure what I want to get, but... Maybe a Yamaha Grizzly, maybe a 570. I don't know. We'll see. But one thing at a time, guys. Um, snorkel kit. I make my own snorkel kit. I offer them for sale. Hit me up if you're interested. I have uh, the links in my videos. Check out my Polaris playlist. Really important. I have all the videos organized in a playlist for you guys. So you can watch just the Polaris stuff. So as I make them, I put them in that list. That way, all my videos are kind of categorized and, and organized in a way that's easy for the viewer. So, lots of cool stuff coming up with the machines. Um, I'll be posting more content. And uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, so, if you have any questions or comments, please place them right down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do so. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.